Hey guys, Jengar here. Welcome to today's realistic review in which we are taking a look at the American F4U4B Corsair sitting at 5.7 battle rating. This is an awesome Corsair. This is a fantastic Corsair. I'm in love with this thing. There is a few downsides though and that is the battle rating. At a 5.7, 6.0 battle rating you are basically constantly flying 6 versus 6, sometimes 7 versus 7. If you're lucky it's 9 versus 9, or and in a rare case you get a 12 versus 12. But the matchmaking at this battle rating is absolute horseshit. You do get quick cues, but I wish they would wait 2 minutes longer so they could put together 2 of those 6 versus 6 matches and make it a 12 versus 12. Because this is just insane, uh, definitely on some of these maps where you have just a whole lot of space and you have six guys running around. And, um, well, it is just, uh, it's just a little bit of a frustration. I uh, flew quite a few matches, so many matches actually that this plane is now actually my most flown match. Because if you have six opponents in the enemy team and you have six in yours, and you have a couple of bombers, which is ah yeah, that's the second thing I almost forgot. The second thing, so you get uh, the the most spawned German bomber, the Ju288C premium bomber, 6.0 battle rating. You'll be facing that all of the time, and in those six versus six matches, you will then have four Ju288Cs. Yes, lovely. And if you know what happens when those things are flying, you're going to get four incoming fast schnell bombers. They will bomb their targets, they will fly back to base. And then you have to look for them, uh, because they will be resurfacing. After the initial uh, merge, sometimes uh, one of your allies dies due to a couple of fighters. Another one dies because of the 20 millimeter on these schnell bombers. And you're two or three people left against uh, three or four bombers. And and then you have this cat and mouse game that takes centuries. I've, I've had that more often than you want to know. And in these matches you come away with two kills, one kill, sometimes three. And, and I mean if you get three kills out of 12, you, you had a quite a good match, right? You had 50% of the enemy team that you got on your guns. And you can't be everywhere at once. And with six opponents, it's difficult to get those nice matches in which you get a couple of stall kills and stuff like that. So it was a frustrating ordeal, I have to say. I did get nice stats on that thing, but uh, and it's now my highest uh, performing American plane. But bloody hell, man! It was uh, it was it, it's actually not too much fun at this around this battle rating with these six versus six matches with four Ju two eighty eight Cs. Lovely. Anyway, the plane, the plane itself is absolutely gorgeous. I love this Corsair. It has a much better engine than the, um, well, much, is, it's, it's a little bit of an exaggeration, but it has uh, more horsepower, a couple of hundreds, uh, than the, the 4, uh, the 4B, uh, and you have the 20 millimeters, which is nice, although, uh, I mean, Gaijin has messed with the 20 millimeters sometimes. I get the idea that... Um, it's less than 50 cal sometimes because uh, you miss a lot of targets, man, with just crits while you're pumping targets full of uh, holes. But uh, yeah, that's just also uh, not too great. But still, they still work in general. The maximum speed in this plane at sea level without web is 602 kilometers an hour with web 643. At 4500 meters, still go up to 524 without web and 573 with. And finally, at 6,500 meters, you can take her to 495 without web and 535 with web. This is a very fast plane, a very fast plane in a straight line at all altitudes. She performs magnificently and you can outspeed pretty much anything that you'll face. It is absolutely fantastic. In a dive, she's reasonable, uh, just the same as the, uh, the F4U4. With the top speed in a dive with a 841 red line and a 910-ish rip uh, speed, which is jet speed, and uh, she uh, stays very functional in that dive. The control stiffening has two small ticks in the uh, elevator compression, 
and aileron compression at around 600 and 750 but the elevator tick is so small that you barely notice it and it's very easy to get out of dives even at 800 kilometers an hour so there is not much of an issue this is a really a plane that can boom and zoom very well the roll rate is very good to begin with so it's lovely the handling in a dive um, it just tends to turn a little bit off target if you do too much shenanigans in the roll rate at the lower end of your dive but it's nothing like the rudder problem that uh, Mustangs have doesn't come close to that and uh, I didn't find it too much of an issue when it comes to that so all in all fantastic plane in a dive very fast performer this one the stall speed in the plane is also nice you have a lot of horsepower especially with web it's one of the best performing webs in the American line and you have a 120 kilometers an hour stall speed firepower is very good you have the four 20 millimeter m3 cannons they are not what they used to be let's just say that the 20 millimeters are not what they used to be the high explosive fillers are, are not what they used to be unfortunately it is uh, sometimes a little bit frustrating that you usually you would have gotten a kill with the old uh, performance and now they fly away with a crit or a hit and uh, I had three kill matches that could have been four or five kill matches uh, even with these small matches but just because of this uh, new performance of the 20 millimeters uh, these cannons they have 246 rounds per gun which is quite nice at this battle rating it also can be equipped with bombs two 1000 pound bomb uh, or the early version the two 500 plus two 250s and you can also equip it with rockets, eight uh, HVAR rockets are your options. Then you have the belts. I used um, air target belts and uh, there's a lot of heavy in that but you can argue that ground belt with three APT uh, shells, armor piercing tracer shells could be nice. The heavy is the high explosive fragmentation incendiary shell. Uh, those are the only two variations. The default belt runs with 50-50 heavy and APT. Universal as well, but they have a different sequence. They have two times APT and two times heavy. The ground belt uh, consists of three APT shells and one heavy shell. Air target is the other way around. Three heavy shells and one APT shell. And the stealth belt is just full of heavy. And that's it. Those are the belts. Uh, I think the stealth belt could be uh, quite nice for the surprise factor. If you want more armor piercing, you go for ground and for the rest if you want more high, most high explosive in there you go for the air targets so all in all they're, they're all viable uh, it just depends on your preference and what works for you i found air targets to be fine although i, I as i said i did get that uh, less results than i'm used to with these guns and um, that is that is very unfortunate i was a little bit disappointed with that but anyway, a very good firepower, very good ammo load. The acceleration in this plane in a straight line is great. In a dive, excellent. The energy retention in the plane is also excellent, both in the horizontal and in the vertical. With that engine on her, the performance is just absolutely gorgeous and it's lovely to fly this plane. Climb rate is decent. The extra power bumps it up a little bit from the four. Not a shit ton of difference, but just nice enough to make it decent. Turn time in the plane is average, above average with flaps. The flaps rip off at around 510, 520 kilometers an hour. And uh, that, that's, that's, that's all right, I guess. You just have to be careful because this plane is so fast and powerful. You, 510 is easily reached and sometimes you already reach it in a straight line. So be careful when you use them on the top of your loop or in a turn fight. But... Um, yeah, got to be careful when you're uh, even decently fast, because this plane is so absolutely beast mode fast, let's say. Uh, overall, uh, roll rate is very good. Roll rate is very good, um, especially at a little bit of speed, above 400 and below 700, uh, the roll rate is excellent on this thing. And uh, below that, it's a little bit, uh, it's, it's around decent at 400, before 400. So the average of the roll rate is very good. But overall maneuverability is decent to good, depending on the speed. Overheating in the plane is quite bad, but it does cool off easily, pretty fast when you go to 95%. So it is definitely manageable, but uh, there is quite a bit of overheating, especially when you use the web. Now, the repair cost in this plane is 12,143 silver lions, 
which is actually one of the highest at this battle rating. I checked pretty much all nations on the 5.7 planes that they have and I un only found a few at 12,000 or above. So this is one of the worst, so it's bad, bad repair cost. The rewards in the plane are also bad. You have a 320% modifier on the research point, points with a 1.6 uh, uh, multiplier. And you have on the Silver Lion department, you have 225% modifier with a 1.5 uh, multiplier. And this is just both, it's just bad, man. It's just bad. Anything at this battle rating has higher pretty much on both accounts. This one sits at the very bottom when it comes to rewards. And I guess they wanted to uh, balance the plane out with the rewards again which is for me it's not a good way to balance a plane i, I really dislike it just make it 6.0 then uh, or whatever but um, don't balance it with the rewards it's just so fucking frustrating this plane is is very good in the hands of uh, of an experienced pilot pilot but um, it will still be difficult against the opposition to fly this plane for uh, for an average or a beginning pilot or even a below average pilot it will be terrible despite the performance in this plane it is a plane that you have to know how to use you have to be disciplined you can switch between boom and zooming and energy fighting and you have to focus on making sure that you uh, know how to do that and many people start turning and if you start turning in this plane uh, you're you're dead the, ex except those first few turns at four five six seven hundred then you can make one or two turns, but once you drop below 400, you will uh, start to uh, get in uh, decreasing results, let's say. Like this, this was an example, this bomber, which I just pumped him full of 20 millimeters and all I got was a crit. Now that can happen, of course, but it happens more often. And that's why I took a few examples with this A8 as well. Uh, if you see this shot here, it's just a crit and nothing else. And uh, I pumped it straight. Uh, usually, in the past, uh, it would have been just devastated at that plane. But, well, that's the way it is, right? I get quite frustrated with this guy, by the way. I cut it out a, f a little bit of the sequence here. But uh, he went back and forth towards the airfield. Just uh, came out from the airfield, climb a little bit, split ass back to the airfield. Do that again and again until I called him out. And then I went into the um, hammerhead. Uh, finishing sequence a little bit too quickly or not exactly a hammerhead but stall maneuver right it wasn't a hundred percent hammerhead you but you'll see it in a sec here later on with that uh, other 190 because he did it in the beginning of the match and he did it later in the match anyway i even i'm, I'm still susceptible to frustration in this game yes yes i am and as i mentioned a lot i do not mind a tactical retreat which I use sometimes as well if you're in a disadvantageous position with three people above you that are coming your way and uh, you're a thousand to fifteen hundred meters below them and you cannot outclimb them you basically reset any way you can to get a more benefic uh, beneficial position and often you see two or three people peel off and if one is left you can make a dogfight with him even if he is in the superior position and most often you can even win that still so I have nothing against a tactical retreat, that is very workable, but if you go back to the airfield, split S, back to the airfield, split S, back to the airfield, you know, that, that is not a tactical retreat anymore, that is just gaming the, um, the AA guns there and trying to uh, get a hit on me so you can get the kill, and it's very frustrating. Here I do get, get the, the, the JU-288, but god damn I'm tired of those things man. I appreciate people flying them. Here we are with that with that game against this guy. But anyway, he, uh, I appreciate people flying those bombers. But in a six-man match with just four of those things and then two fighters against you, you have these very frustrating matches. And, uh, well, if you then get a guy like this, uh, and I go into the hammerhead too quickly because I was just so fucking furious in my head. <laughs> so I will die here, actually, because he doesn't stall out. I should have waited two or three more seconds, but uh, yeah, you see here, he still have, has the aim, and, and only here he, he keels over. Uh, but, oh well, you know, oh well. I, I, another JU-288, get, get away with those things. Don't want to see them anymore. Bloody hell. But I will have to fly a couple of more planes at this battle rating, so uh, unfortunately I'm afraid I'm, I'm going to see more of them. <laughs> 
very unfortunate for me. But anyway, uh, this is one of those results uh, scores on the on one of these matches. Final blow, the best squad, Terror of the Sky, Bulletproof, 26,000 silver lines and 8,000 research points. is crap, of course. Anyway, I'll see you in the conclusion. Hey guys, so here we are after the match. Now this plane is magnificent. God damn it, man. I, I have said many times before that I love Corsairs. And this one is awesome. Power at your fingertips. Great guns. At least, it, it <laughs> used to be great guns. They're still good though, but great performance. Lovely plane in the vertical. Very fast. Great in the dive. The, uh, what more could you want? This is an excellent boom and zoomer slash energy fighter that in, when it's fast it can roll very nicely and can make a few turns so it's lovely to fly this plane it's absolutely enjoyable but you have that 6.0 hellish place that is called a matchmaker and you get six man matches with four ju 288s in pretty much any match you'll you'll go into sometimes you get nine men in nine people and you're like oh, oh yes a few more fighters please thank you and, and then you're a little bit happy or you get a Heinkel 177, they still fly around as well. So yeah, man, um, it's a frustrating game at the moment at this battle rating. And I can only imagine what it's going to be like in the other planes at around 6.3 battle rating because I'm going to be facing these things as well, probably a lot and, and the 7.0, but we'll see that later. But this plane is fantastic. I love it. It's, it's awesome. It's, it's now my best performing or my highest score. I have the highest amount of kills in my American line. I don't fly planes that often, of course, that, that long after I do the review. So my total scores are not as high as some people who just play for fun. But I had, uh, what is it, 73 kills and 9 deaths in this thing. So that for me, that's above my average. Fantastic plane. I love it. But the matchmaking at 6.0, man, phew, I'm glad I can take a break from that. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I want to thank you all for watching. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. If you're new here, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Become part of this community. If you are already a subscriber, don't forget to like the video. Do leave me a comment. And if you really feel like helping out today, make sure to share the video with your friends and let them know about the channel.